Welcome back. We are still looking at our Teaks Guide. Today we're actually going to dive into our Teaks Guide resources to see exactly what we have available. So the very first thing I'm going to do is click on what subject I'm interested in, English language arts and reading, and then I'm going to click on my grade. So I'm going to click on fifth grade and then I'm going to search. Once I start to search, I can filter it out a little bit more. I'm going to select the strand and I'm going to say I really want to find more resources for my comprehension skills. Once I get to my comprehension skills, my go-to is inferencing. I know that inferencing is a tough skill over the grade levels and so I always want to see what else is available for me to help them understand how to not only make inferencing skills but how to support it with evidence from the text. So I'm going to go to ELA 5.6.F and I'm going to click on it. Once I click on it, you will notice that there are several different components of this platform. So we have an overview, alignments, assessments, and resources. And we are actually going to go through each one of them to look at the different resources available to us. What I noticed first when I logged on is there are certain words or phrases that are underlined and they are a blue font. If you hover over these, it has extra information to help you understand what exactly we're asking the students to do and most importantly like what the expectation is for the students so this says the student is expected to make inferences and use evidence to support understanding so when i hover over make inferences i'm not clicking on it i'm just hovering over it it gives me a blurb about what it means to make an inference and then it also gives me a little example Again, if I hover over use evidence, same thing. It gives me a blurb on what that actually means for students to use evidence. When I get to my knowledge and skills statement, same thing. I can hover right over these words or phrases to really help me understand what is it that I'm actually supposed to be getting my students to do? What are they responsible for knowing? You'll also see the question marks right here. The question marks you can click on and when you click on those, it'll tell you what the expectation means and then what the actual knowledge and skill statement means. And then you will just click on those again to get those to disappear. Still looking at the overview tab, there's a video here that I can play to help me understand what this um, TEAK is about. So I clicked on the play, I can click on play again. In the comprehension skills strand, students develop and deepen the skills necessary to comprehend and think critically about a variety of texts. So you'll notice that every TEAK that you click on, every standard that you click on, there is a video to help you understand what it is those students are responsible for. And they've created a mini series and it's called TEAKS Talk. So I'm just going to click over here on this white space to get rid of that video. Okay, here is an example in fifth grade of how this could actually be asked to students. So you can click right here to show further explanation. And then you can also click here to show the answer and it gives you the rationale behind each answer. And if you are looking for the actual story, it's right here, swimming to the rock, which this one is actually a poem. Here is how it would be asked on a star test. Here are the answer choices they would be given. And again, here are those explanations and that rationale for each one. So I'm going to click off of these and I'm going to hide this. And now let's go to the glossary support. So when you click on your glossary support, it takes certain words from your TEAK and helps you understand them a little bit better. So make inferences, text evidence, and use evidence. Each standard has a glossary support to help you understand what those words actually mean. And then they also have supporting information, which is great because we have made the transition to our new strands. But if you've been teaching for a long time, you are used to the old TEAKs 
And so a lot of the figure 19s have been taken and put into different strands. But if you're looking for the correlation, it's right here when you look for supporting information and it tells you what it used to be. So let's scroll back up. Now we're gonna to go to alignment. When we click on alignment, you can actually see what making inferences looks like in different grade levels. Mine is highlighted fifth grade because that's the actual teak that I was looking at. But if I was curious to see what it looked like in fourth grade, I would simply click ELA.4.6.F and then ELA 4.6.F. It's going to pull it up and then I can see how it would be asked in fourth grade. If I wanted to see how it would be asked in sixth grade, I can do the same exact thing. I can click on it and an example would pop up on how it would be asked in sixth grade and with the same information so I can start to see what kids should have learned previously and then what they'll need to know to be successful in the next grade level. So all about working with some vertical alignment. I'm going to exit off of those windows. You can do add more previous grades and you can also add the next grades. They also have an assessment, so they are taking um, poems, passages that they have used in previous star tests. They are putting them right here so you can see them. And then also that question again is right here. So they've put it in two different places. They put it in the actual assessment tab, and then they also put it in the overview tab. Let's look at resources. So resources, they have different um, ways that you could help teach this in the classroom. So put on your detective cap, making inferences. I can actually click on this. It's gonna take me to a website that will help me, and I haven't logged in, so that's why it didn't pop up. If I was logged in, it would have taken me and you would have been able to see the actual activity. There's dyslexia support. You have some general resources but the one thing that I really like about this more than anything is in Dallas ISD, we have so many different resources um, that we can use to help. So we have different programs that we use. We have HMH, we have Learning A through Z. This actually tells you the material that you're using and how it actually helps the kids. Does it help the kids get to meets? Does it help the kids get to masters? And it'll tell you right here, the TEKS coverage, if you're using Collaborative Classroom, is only 80%. But if you go down to HMH, it's 100%. If you go down to iStation, it's 100%. If you go to Learning A through Z, it's only 74%. If you go down to Pearson, you'll see again, it's 100%. So this is really useful when I'm trying to figure out, okay, I'm teaching inferencing, which platform am I gonna use to really help me help the kids understand more about inferencing. Well, I know that if I use HMH, that's gonna give me a really great start. If I use iStation, that would give me a great start. And if I use McGraw-Hill, that would also give me a great start. I can also see that if I use learning A through Z, it will give me a okay start, but I wanna make sure that I'm using the resource that's gonna give me 100% for this now this changes determining which platform you're actually using so if you look for a different standard this will be different it will change but for inferencing I know that I would just use my HMH so today we looked at the overview we looked at the alignment we looked at the assessments, and we also looked at the resources. If you have any questions, always feel free to send me an email, and I'll be happy to upload different videos to help us understand the resources that we have at our hand. Thank you for joining me.